A detective held up the infant's clothing in hopes of finding the newborn's mother. The baby was wearing a tiny cap and bundled up in two onesies and a blanket. Police say it was just after 9 o'clock when a man discovered the baby girl in the vestibule of his apartment complex. He noticed a uh, yellow Timberland work boot box on the floor. He heard some noise coming out of it. He looked down, he noticed that there was a an infant wrapped in a blanket. Inside. Police say the baby was no more than 24 hours old. Weighing just five pounds, seven ounces, she was rushed to Nassau University Medical Center. That's right, there at ritzy Long Island, home to the Hamptons, the vacation getaway to celebrities and superstars all over the world, someone discards, abandons a 24-hour-old baby girl, treating her as if she's part of a science project in high school, leaving her in a shoebox with holes punched in the top. Thanks, Mom. We're taking your calls live. Brooke in New York. Hi, Brooke. Hi, Nancy. Hi, dear. What's your question? Well, I just want to say thank you for everything you do. You are just such a blessing to, to everyone. We're here in Cicero, New York, and we just really appreciate everything you do for the victims. Well, Brooke, thank you, and I, I certainly do not deserve that praise, but I'm very grateful for it. What is your question, dear? Uh, well, my question is two, really. One, could they check for fingerprints on the box and things like that? And then today, with today's technology, since the umbilical cord is still attached, I mean, there's DNA of the mother and also, you know, the father and the, of the baby, and just, you know, get those tests going right away to try to see if there's any matches or any hairs or anything in the box. I'm sure the police are checking that, but just to get this, this baby, you know, to safety and... Like that. What about it, Ron Shindell, former NYPD deputy inspector? Uh, of course, you've got to be able to have someone to match the DNA to. Yes, they can uh, extract DNA, but uh, you know you're you're stabbing in the dark because you got to have somebody to match it to. Well, Nancy, first they're going to get, gather all the forensic evidence they possibly can. If they then take all that forensic evidence and start as a foundation, now they're going to go out, they're going to conduct interviews, they're going to ask questions, they're going to look at hospital records to see if any woman recently has gone to a hospital which might be post-birth, uh, so have some post-birth complications or well, anything. Well, I guarantee you this, Shindell, this baby was not born in a hospital. They don't tie umbilical cords with dental floss. But I understand you're saying, has a woman been in the hospital that was about to give birth? You're or, absolutely correct. Or post-birth complications. This, this would be the biggest lead they could go from out there. Yes. To Maya in Illinois. Hi, Maya. Hi, Nancy. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you for calling in, dear. What's your question? Well, you just said part of it. I had a comment. I thought somebody might have been bleeding or um, had some post-birthing problems. Also, Nancy, the clothing looks as if it was from a, a used clothing and very nice clothing but for a baby boy um, interesting you're right you're right it does look like it's from a baby boy now what does that suggest to you mark class that it does look like a traditional baby boy's onesie well it might suggest that there was a baby boy in the household where where this mother lived or that she somehow otherwise had access um, to clothing from a baby boy. Uh, I think it's instructive though, Nancy, to, to inform your audience and to let everybody know that there are safe haven laws in every one of the 50 states and they've all been enacted in the last 10 years. And they've been enacted so that people that have these desperate situations have a safe place to take their little children within one to five days, uh, either a police department, an emergency room, or a fire department, so that these children do have opportunities to have good lives, and so that they don't end up like so many of the kids that we've talked about on this show, who are either erased or eliminated, and then the crime is covered up. Well put. To Dr. Joshua Perper, Chief Medical Examiner, Broward County, author of When to Call the Doctor, Dr. Perper, welcome. What potential health damage may have already been done to the child? Well, obviously the, the child was exposed to the elements, but we know that he was examined and he was okay. Somebody could have stepped on the child. People don't always look where they are walking. But an animal or a dog could have attacked the child. Uh, the child could have been exposed to uh, 
to the rain or, or to the elements or to hot temperature. What about so, if a child doesn't get proper nourishment when it is first born? Well, the first day they usually don't eat anyway. Uh, or they, it's very little, there's no, really not food given to them. So, because this child was just 24 hours old, I don't think that this made any uh, impact on his health. And as we are told, the child is healthy. Thank God. Everyone, tip line 800 244 TIPS, 244 8477. Very quickly to tonight's case alert. A five-year-old cancer patient gets a once-in-a-lifetime trip to Disney World for Make-A-Wish Foundation. She comes home to a home burglarized, ransacked, the TV, electronics, gone. The burglars even stealing money from little Mina's school backpack. To top it all off, the family van used to take Mina to Children's Hospital for treatment damaged. Please help. Donations go to the Trust for Mina Small, here on Dollar Bank, PO 765, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If you have info on the burglary, 412-798-2035.